Hello students. In today's class, we are going to learn about electrolysis of molten lead bromide and electrolysis of acidified water. Electrolysis of molten lead bromide. During electrolysis of lead bromide, the lead bromide is taken in the molten state as an electrolyte. Lead bromide consists of lead cation, that is Pb2+, and bromide as an anion Br-. In the solid state, lead bromide Ions do not move freely because they are held by a strong electrostatic force. So, we consider a molten lead bromide for electrolysis of lead bromide. We are not using water as lead bromide is insoluble in water. During this process, the electrolytic cell is made up of a silica crucible. Silica crucible is used to withstand high temperature because we are going to heat this around 380 degrees Celsius. And the silica crucible is non-reactive and a non-conductor of electricity. And the electrolyte used is molten lead bromide. And the electrodes, cathode is a graphite, anode is made up of graphite. Both the electrodes are inert because they are unaffected by the bromine vapors evolved in the anode. And the temperature is maintained above 380 degrees Celsius so that lead bromide will melt. During this process, how lead bromide dissociate? Lead bromide dissociate into Pb2 plus and Br minus. Pb2 plus, the so cation, will always move towards cathode. Br1 minus, an anion, will move towards anode. What happens in the cathode and anode? What reaction is taking place in cathode and anode? We are going to learn that. In the cathode, Pb2 plus will gain two electrons and discharge Pb there. Or you can say deposit the lead metal in the cathode. In anode, Br will release electron or donate electron and forms the bromine fumes there are bromine vapor. In this, they can ask the question based on observation. In your exam, they can ask the question, write cathode reaction and state your observation. So during the observation in cathode, a silvery gray deposit of lead metal the word silvery gray is very, very important keyword here. Same way in anode reaction, the observation is reddish brown fumes of bromine vapors. This word reddish brown fume is a keyword here. Now let us move on to the second example of electrolysis 
of acidified water. During this process, the electrolytic cell which we are using is called Hoffman's voltmeter, and the electrolyte which we are using is acidified water. Why we are using acidified water? Because water is a non-electrolyte. A pure water is a non-electrolyte. If you are adding acid to it, it will easily dissociate into ions. That's the reason this type of electrolysis of acidified water is considered as catalysis. And the electrode used is platinum electrode. Both cathode and anode are made up of platinum as it is an inert electrode. It won't take part in the reaction. And the temperature is maintained as a room temperature, normal, ordinary temperature. Now, the dissociation reaction, how it happens? In this, we are having sulfuric acid and water. Sulfuric acid will dissociate into H plus ion and SO4 2 minus ion. Water will dissociate into H plus ion and OH minus ion. In the cathode, we are having only one cation that is H plus. So definitely hydrogen is going to be released in the cathode. So what happens in the cathode reaction? H plus will accept one electron and will change to hydrogen. And then in anode, we are having two anions that is SO4 2 minus and OH 1 minus. Among these two anion which will discharge at anode. We all learnt about electrochemical series. According to electrochemical series whichever is placed at the lower end of the electrochemical series they are the one going to be discharged. So when you check for this anion electrochemical series, OH will be placed at the lower end of electrochemical series. So among this SO4 2 minus and OH minus, OH is going to be discharged. Now what is the reaction taking place at anode? OH will lose one electron and form OH which will be converted into water and oxygen. So they can ask a question, name the gases which is released in cathode and anode during the electrolysis of acidified water. In cathode, hydrogen gas is released. In anode, oxygen gas is released. Same way, what is the volume? What is the volume of the gas released? Two volume of hydrogen and one volume of oxygen is released. So according to Avogadro law, molecules can be substituted by volumes. Instead of saying two hydrogen molecule, we can just substitute them by volume also. That's the reason we are writing two volume of hydrogen and one volume of oxygen. This is also frequently asked question in the board. Now, let's move on to the observation. What happens and what is the word expected as an observation? So if you see the observation in the cathode, SO4 2 minus migrate towards anode. They are migrating towards anode. That means the concentration of acid will decrease. So the word expected here is acidity decreases in cathode. So automatically what happens as this SO4 is migrating towards anode, the concentration will increase at anode. Acidity increase in anode. The main observation asked during this electrolysis of acidified water.
Let us summarize. In today's class, we learnt about electrolysis of molten lead bromide and electrolysis of acidified water. Thank you.